Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to the maiden episode of the Filipino genealogy vlog. Today we are going to talk about the Lopez family. Or to be more specific, as a family name Lopez is one of the most popular surnames in the country, we will talk about the history of the Lopez family of Haro Iloilo. Many of us have been witnesses to yet another drama that has unfolded before our very eyes involving these Lopez's. As we all know, the franchise of their most popular business enterprise, ABS-CBN, has recently expired and its renewal still in limbo. The Lopez family controls many aspects of the Filipino nation that there is no part of the Filipino life that is not touched by this family. Let's face it, they control mass media, they control cable television, they control energy, they even control the Bayad Center where people pay their bills. Again, no part of the Filipino life is not touched by the Lopez family. Family lore has it that the first, or at least the earliest recorded ancestor of the Lopez's, was a Chinese mestizo by the name of Basilio. Now, Basilio was supposed to have come from Batangas. During the early 1800s, there was a childless, wealthy Spaniard who also came from Batangas who decided to settle down in Haro Iloilo because he found the place peaceful enough and saw it as a place with full economic potentials. With him was his young aide named Basilio, and Basilio was said to be a Chinese mestizo. As he was childless and he trusted everything to Basilio, he developed a paternal relationship with the child until such time when he bestowed not just his fortune but also his last name of Lopez to Basilio, thus making him Basilio Lopez. And this guy is said to be the first in the line of the Lopez's. Basilio was later to marry Maria Sabina Halandoni. Now, again, according to family lore, Maria Sabina was said to have been the daughter of a trusted laundry woman of the wealthy Halandoni family of Haro. And she too was allowed to use the surname Halandoni and later inherited a substantial portion of her adoptive parents' properties. Of course, these lores are the stuff of myth-making. While the research of the family say this, it is my belief that Basilio was actually a native of Haro. There were already a lot of Lopez's in Haro as early as the 1800s, way before the Carrera surname decree. And it is possible that one of these branches produced Basilio. Now, it is also my contention that Maria Sabina was really actually a legitimate Halandoni. It would have been very difficult at that time to have been born out of wedlock and to be a bastard at that, to be allowed to carry the surname of a very influential and very wealthy family. So it is really possible that both Basilio and Sabina really came from money from the very beginning. And these stories of them coming from more modest backgrounds were probably said and given as fairy tales to the younger generation to allow them to aspire for higher things in life. Be that as it may, Sabina would give birth to 16 children and 10 of whom would survive to maturity. And although very few of these early Lopez's left documents, according to the historian of the Lopez family, Oscar Lopez, Basilio was a prosperous Chinese mestizo, timber merchant, and was later elected as a cabeza de barangay, serving from 1842 to 1862. He was also elected for one term, Gobernador Silio, 
of Haro in 1849. Now, uh, that is why Basilio is always known in the family as Capitan Basilio. Capitan referring to his title as the municipal captain of, of Haro uh, and uh, not as a captain of a ship. Among his 16 children, Eugenio, his son, would prove to be the most prominent. Eugenio Lopez, born in 1839, would follow in the footsteps of his father and be elected as a gobernadorcillo of Haro as well. He married Marcela Villanueva y Felipe, and just like his father, he had 16 children, two of whom became more prominent than the rest. His son, Benito Lopez, would later become a governor of Iloilo. Born in 1877, Benito Lopez married Presentacion Javelona Hofilenia, one, another member of one of the richest families in Iloilo. Governor Benito Lopez was a well-loved politician in Iloilo. However, on December 27, 1907, two months after his re-election, a former revolutionary officer named Joaquin Hill walked into his office and shot him four times. Several weeks later, Governor Benito Lopez died in a local hospital, leaving a modest legacy. His wife, Presenta Sean, was left with just two kids to raise. Eugenio Lopez and Fernando Lopez. Now, before we trace the story of their children and grandchildren, let us also take a look at a sibling of Governor Benito Lopez by the name of Paz Lopez. Now, Paz Lopez was married to an attorney from another prominent family in Iloilo by the name of Don Salvador Laguda. One of their children was Hortensia Lopez Laguda, who later married an American by the last name of Stark and who also became a representative to the Philippine legislature. She died in 2010. Eugenio Lopez, the elder son of the assassinated Benito Lopez, was born in 1901. Now, this was the first Lopez to enrich himself so much so that his fortune remains until this very day. Eugenio Lopez married Pasita de Santos Moreno, and they would have five children. Before we go to them, let us also talk about one of the more prominent members of the family, Fernando Lopez, who served as vice president to Ferdinand Marcos. Born in 1904, just three years younger than his older brother, Eugenio, Fernando Lopez would later marry Mariquit Javeliana, and one of their sons, Alberto Lopez, would later become a representative to the Philippine Congress. Now let's go down to the children of Eugenio Lopez and Pasita Moreno. His eldest son, Eugenio, known to the family as Henny Lopez Jr., was born in 1929. Another brother was Oscar Lopez, born in 1930. Then we have Manuel Lopez, born in 1942. These three sons would become the pillars and would make their father's business enterprise grow bigger than 
was left to them. It would also help that these three men, together with the other siblings, would marry into other prominent and equally wealthy families. For instance, Eugenio Henny Lopez Jr. married Conchita Argueles Lao. Now, Conchita Lao was the sister of two other Laos who would marry into prominent families. One would marry the Ulmang Lapus and the other would marry into the Manotok family. This was the first connection of the family to a presidential family. One of the Manotok children would later marry the first daughter, Aimee Marcos. Oscar, meanwhile, married Consuelo B. Rufino from the prominent and wealthy Rufino family. Manuel Lopez, who would later be appointed ambassador, was married to Maria Teresa B. Lagdameo, again from another old family in Manila. Henry Lopez would have nine children with his wife Conchita, but two of them would stand out as the more popular of the siblings. One is Eugenio Gabriel Gabby Lopez III, born in 1952, and the other one is Regina Paz Lopez, who recently died in 2019. Now, Regina Paz, or known to many as Gina Lopez, was more popular among her siblings because she was appointed as secretary of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources by President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Uh, unfortunately for Gina Lopez, despite the strong support from the rest of the Filipino people, she was not confirmed in her position and was later replaced. However, she dedicated her life into environmental worthy causes before she died in 2019. Her siblings, of course, share in the running of their very big business enterprise. Her older brother, Gabby Lopez, is, of course, the titular head of the Lopez Group of Companies. Now, Oscar and Consuelo would have Federico R. Lopez. Now, these Lopez's presented here are the more active Lopez's in running the business, but uh, as in any family business, everyone, well, most everyone probably uh, has a share, but these are the more prominent and more active members in the Lopez group of companies. Meanwhile, Ambassador Manuel Lopez and My Maria Teresa Lagdameo would have five or four very active children. Maita Lopez, who is married to Alim Chauco. Manuel Beaver Lopez Jr., who married Jackie Ejercito Estrada, daughter of former Philippine President Joseph Ejercito Estrada. The other son is Martin Mark Lopez and Miguel Mike Lopez. Maita, Beaver, Mark, and Mike are all very active in running the various businesses of the Lopez Group of Companies. Meanwhile, Congressman Alberto Lopez would have one child by the name of Bettina Mejia Lopez. Bettina would later marry Senator Sergio Osmeña III, grandson of former Philippine President Sergio Osmeña Sr. Now, it is even more interesting to note that one of their sons married a niece of former Secretary 
Manuel Mar Rojas II, grandson of former Philippine President Manuel Acuna Rojas. There are many more members of the Lopez family, but suffice it for now that these are the more active members who carry the positions of executive directors, CEOs, CIOs, CFOs, and other major titles into the Lopez group of companies. We have ABS, CBN, Sky Cable, First Gen, the Filipino Channel, Ben Press Insurance Agency Incorporated, Rockwell Land, Bayad Center, CICF, and Meralco, among others. The Lopez family has endured many hardships and trials over the years. In fact, it is said that they have courted and won the favors of almost every Philippine president since President Kazon. There might be a temporary lull in their influence during the administration of President Duterte, but just as their history has shown, they would continue to grow their business and as the family would grow, so would their influence. Well, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for listening to my first episode uh, talking about the Lopez family of Haro Iloilo. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And uh, I would appreciate your feedback as to how to improve my presentation and if you have suggestions of other families to present, I am all ears. Once again, thank you and stay safe, everyone.